now what we're going to make is um, the actual spokes. And it's going to be a lot easier if we have a reference image for this. So for right now I'm going to minimize this here. And depending on where you saved your images, it's going to change where you go to find them. But I saved mine in low poly car, so I'm going to open this up. Go to my references folder, because that's where I saved them. And just continue going until you get to the image that we're looking for, which is this one. It'll be in the description, and you should already have it if, um, if you've been following along. You should already have all the, the images I've been using. So now you're just going to select it by left clicking it. And then left click and drag. Continue holding down the mouse and just hover over this GIMP thing. And actually before we do this, hold on a second, we're going to... I guess we'll just drop it here. That didn't really do anything, which is good, because we have to right click and do new layer. Because we want to do this on a new layer. And just click OK. The settings should all be what we want, which is 2048 and then transparency. So just click OK. Now minimize it. Left click and drag on the image. Hover over GIMP. Hover over this area and then re release the mouse and that should put the image right here which is what we want. But it's not really rotated the way we want it and it's not really positioned where we want it. So we're going to lower the opacity a bit. It's at 100% right here so make sure you have this layer selected and you can just, if your mouse is uh, closer to the top of this it'll let you just left click to change the opacity to wherever your mouse is if your mouse is closer to the bottom you can left click and drag to change the opacity more slowly something like this is probably fine about 50 percent so that we can see our image below and the picture that's above it. So now we want to make sure we have our move tool selected and this layer selected and then we want to move basically this center piece to the center of our image that we've created. So we're going to drag this over to about here and we'll have to move this again in a second so don't be too precise about this because we have to rotate our image as well. So I'm just going to press um, the negative, the minus sign on my number pad to zoom out a little bit. And actually I'll probably just zoom in again because I think it's, it's easier when you're zoomed in I guess. So since this is 2048 by 2048 Approximately halfway is going to be 10, well exactly halfway is going to be 1024, so it's going to be somewhere around here, basically here, so you can see down and down here it's got the, uh, the X and Y coordinates, so that's 1024 right there, so basically this marker is 1025 I would assume. So we want to go to the rotation tool again with this layer selected and left click now we can start dragging this slider and rotating it the goal is to basically make these straight up and down and that looks okay so I'm just gonna click rotate you may have to rotate it a couple times to get it right, but now you'll notice the center is is uh, down here instead of in the middle of our other image. So we want to move again, so click the move tool, click the center, drag it to the center. 
and that doesn't look too bad at all. Something like that should be should be good, I think. It may need to be rotated slightly, at least in my case. I'm trying to like pretend there's a center line right here and you want the image to be perfectly centered so you want it to go straight through. You want that imaginary line to go straight through the center and it looks a little off right here slightly so I'm going to rotate it again ever so slightly in the other direction. probably too much so you can just enter in a uh, your own your own number here and then click rotate and you may have to move it again slightly But I'm not really too happy with that. Maybe I'll just stick with the other one. So I'm going to do Control Z a couple times. We'll just stick with this. This should be fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. People won't really notice too much, I don't think. So now we have the background image. And we want to start drawing this out. But we're going to make a new layer. So I'm going to select this bottom layer. And if you click the eye, this is, uh, well, you can't really see here. Is this a totally, yeah, this is a totally new layer, actually. So I've got this new layer here that we weren't, we're not using yet. It doesn't have anything on it, I guess. So you want a new layer. If you don't have a new layer, you can just select this, um, this one, and then right-click and do new layer. But I guess I made a new layer and didn't realize it. So I've already got a blank layer. That's what you want. If you don't have a blank layer, go right-click, new layer. And just use the default settings when the, the pop-up comes up. So I'm going to turn this other layer back on so we can see it. And we're going to use the path tool here. So left click on it. The edit mode should be set to design. If yours isn't, just left click, make sure it's on design. So what we're going to do to start out is just make these spokes here. And we don't actually have to make both sides of, like, we don't have to make this right one and this left one. We can just do the right one and then flip it so that we have the left one. So we're just going to make this right one real quick. And instead of stopping it right here where this dark line is, I'm just going to go all the way to the edge, I guess. And just start left clicking to create points wherever you think you need them wherever the the image starts to curve and if you need to you can go back to this other layer and make the opacity 100 percent so that you can just see this better but when you're making your um your lines just make sure you're on this layer so you want this one selected and then you can continue with the path tool here and we also don't need to make all five of these individual spokes because we can duplicate them and rotate them similar to how we made these other things and rotated them we'll do the same for the spokes so we really only have to go this far right here and actually in reality we only have to go halfway on either side but since we're mirroring this for now we'll just go here so now once you have basically this you want to left click on this one to select it to make it the active point and then left click over here to make the other part and continue down left clicking going point from point or point to point and if you want to make adjustments you can just left click on one of these things and just drag it around to wherever you think you need it
and we can see this is a little more curved here in this part we should and we also need to curve down here to do that we're gonna go to edit right here just left click on this you can also use the hotkey which is control so if we were on design we could just hold control and it would do the same thing but I'm just gonna change it to edit for a moment and then you want to hover over where you want to add a point left click and drag and then drag the point to where you want it and then let go do the same here hover over where you want to make a point left click drag and add the curvature that you want that's going to be fine for what we need so now to make this an actual line first of all just be sure you have it selected layer 26 or whichever blank layer you made just make sure that's selected then go to stroke path you're gonna want to change your line width to 3 mine's already at 3 but I'll just do it anyway go to line style and you're gonna want to make sure this is on round here the center one by default I think it's on this one which is called butt which is pretty funny <laughs> but you want to make sure both of these are on round by default it's these two you want them to be on the middle two so just left click on these make sure it's on those two then I'm gonna drag this window up you can leave all the rest of the settings the same and then click stroke you won't really see anything because this front image is blocking it so you can just click the little eye button and if you press the plus key on your number pad you can zoom in and see the result here but actually I forgot one thing which was to change the color over here so this is actually a black color and that's not what we want so I'm gonna zoom out again with the minus key control Z to undo the hiding of this layer and then control Z again to undo the stroke I'm just gonna make sure it's actually gone and it is so we want to change it to a different color I've already chosen this gray you can just copy the values here or this HTML notation or you can choose a different color if you want a lighter gray or a darker gray it's up to you and then just click OK now we're gonna go to stroke path all the settings should be the same as what we just made them including these two here so now all we have to do is click stroke just make sure you have this layer selected if it wasn't you can control Z undo it and select this layer before you do it so now I'm gonna hide this one and we'll take a look at it with the plus key to zoom in and that looks good so we're all set with that so now that we are happy with our result here we can change from the path tool to the move tool which will remove our path so you only want to do this once you're totally happy with what you have and I'm fairly happy with it so I'm just gonna to go to the move tool now the path is gone but uh, if we turn this layer off we still have our drawing just like this so to mirror this what we're gonna do is just duplicate this layer so you can either right click and go to duplicate or you can use the hotkey control shift D and then once you've done that and you have your new layer here you're gonna go to layer transform flip horizontally and there we go all set but it looks a little off like if you look at the uh, the original one there's more spacing between those two things so I think I need to move this image over a bit it's not really not really working out for us here or I could um, I could just move this layer over a little 
and call it good and maybe down a little because I want it to be a little further down from uh, this thing here so I'm actually going to delete this layer 27 so I'm just going to right click delete layer go to layer 26 and we're going to we're going to move this so I'm going to switch this to move active layer and I want to move it right a little and down a little so I'm going to just click and drag right a little down a little till I'm happy with it something like this maybe and we'll see how that looks now I want to go to layer and layer to image size because it's gonna mess things up if we don't I think and then we're just gonna do control shift D to make the new layer go back to layer transform flip horizontally and it looks a bit better looks uh, a bit closer to what it's supposed to be I would say uh, perhaps not perfect but you're welcome to adjust it as you want I don't want to spend too much time on it but once you have this what we can do is uh, go to this layer right click on it and choose merge down that'll make them all one layer it'll make these the those two layers one layer so now if we click the the I button all of it's together so the reason we're gonna do that is because if we uh, duplicate this layer with control shift D and then go to our rotation tool and then left click this time we're gonna enter in 72 uh, the center X and center Y should still be 1024 if it's not um, you're gonna want to go to layer and do what we did before and then you're gonna want to do this and click rotate interestingly it's not showing up for whatever reason it doesn't seem to have actually rotated the image so we're gonna try again left click oh because I didn't press enter so you want to type in uh, 72 press enter and then rotate that's why I didn't move I didn't press enter so now we have what we want we have our second spoke over here and what I was talking about before if it doesn't rotate correctly you want to go to layer and um, layer to image size just like before and that will make sure it's rotating correctly like this just like we did with uh, these other things so now we have a small problem if you zoom in a bit with the plus key you can see we have these lines that are extending much too far so what we're gonna do is one by one we're gonna turn off this layer and we want to actually just delete this uh, this curve so we're going to go to this which is the eraser you want to change your brush to this one this big circle here hardness 100 you want to go to dynamic options so you want to click this plus button and under fade length you want to change this to zero and you can change your brush size as well I'm using 10 pixels you can use whatever you want but you can just change it like this to whatever you want and then just start erasing whoops I'm on the wrong layer so I want to actually select layer 26 and uh, start erasing this but you don't want to erase the very tip of this so you want to get close to the tip but don't erase it that's close enough because we're actually going to draw another line there so that minor mistake there is fine so now I'm going to hide this layer and then unhide this other layer and then select it and interestingly some of it already seems to have been deleted but that's fine I suppose um, actually I'm gonna just control Z because I don't want it to be like that so I'm just gonna keep control Z until all of its back because I it was because I had this layer selected initially 
So we're just going to go back and do this again, or at least I am. If you didn't mess up, you don't have to. But you just want to get all of it except for the tip, and then do the same over here. Whoops, and I'm doing it again. I still have this layer selected and I'm messing it up. So you want to make sure you have the correct layer selected when you're doing this. So that should be fine. So now I'm going to activate both layers. And now what we can do is go to this top layer, right click, merge down. Now it's all one layer. It's all together. So we can work with it a lot easier. And we're going to make sure it's selected and then go to the path tool and start um, well, we're going to click design first so we can make our design. Click on the starting point and click on the ending point. And then we're going to go to edit. And again, we're going to just curve this a little, however you want to curve it. And then you can do stroke path. All the settings should be the same as before. Click stroke. There's our uh, connecting point there. So if you go to the move tool, it'll get rid of your, your points. There's a little um, overlap right here, but that's fine. I'm not going to worry about it. It's small enough that people aren't going to notice. Especially, like, once you zoom out, you certainly aren't going to notice at all. So now we have that, but we also want to go back up here, take a look at our wheel. So that was the connecting point down here, from here to here. And we want to connect it from the top as well, just like it is up here. So I'm going to hide this again and go back to the path tool. You can zoom in a little if you want with the plus key. And go to the starting point, which would be basically here. But you want to make sure you're on design. Go to the starting point. Go to the ending point. Left click. Switch to edit. Try to get roughly in the center. Click and drag. You can use the the underlying green and gray circles to try to make this an actual circle. And if you need to move it, you may need to switch back to design. Once you're happy with it, you're going to go to stroke path, click on stroke. And as always, you want to just make sure you're on the right layer. Just make sure you're constantly making sure you're on the correct layer, because I've had times where I've had the wrong layer selected and gone through and done it, and then realized I have to do it again because I put it on the wrong layer. So just be careful with that. And then when you're done, you can click the Move tool to take a look at what you have. It's not perfect. Um, you can notice it's a little bit lower than it should be. It should be up higher so that it's actually looking continuous. So I need to go back and do that. So I'm going to do Control Z until that line is gone, which in this case was just once. And then go back to the Path tool and try again. So I want to make it a little further out this time. Make sure Design is selected. Then edit it again. And Stroke Path. and we'll see if that's any better. That's pretty decent. I think that's uh, it's gonna be good enough. So if we take a look at our image again, we also have um, a line right here. So we're gonna make that one next. Just go to the path tool, make sure you're on design, click your starting point, click your ending point, Go to edit and try to get the center and curve this a bit. Try to match the curve of the rest of it. It actually doesn't look as curved as it perhaps should be, but we're going to just go with what we have. And that looks okay, so I'm going to stick with that. And if you ever want to, you can always go back and erase some of this and try again so it's not like it's uh, something we can't fix later in the event that we want to. So now we also have this inner curve. It actually doesn't join up with um, these spokes here but I think I'm going to make it join up with them just for simplicity. 
So we're going to make it join up a little below this, uh, this curve right here. It joins up down here a little bit further down and then curves up and around and then curves back down to join in below that curve down here as well. So I'm going to go to the path tool again with layer 26 selected. Click design. So a little below this and if you want to you can actually um, you can leave this image up select this layer and change the the opacity or you can just leave it at hundred percent and just follow the curve because when you're making the curve you can make it on this layer and that's fine and we'll just we'll do it that way this time we'll just go click the path tool and actually I just want to make sure because okay so we want to start here basically and we'll see if this lines up and it kind of lines up with the picture so we're gonna have to make some small adjustments because it doesn't uh, doesn't line up perfectly so you're basically gonna have two points here and we'll have two points over here so something like this and just make sure it lines up with your see it doesn't line up at all so uh, you're gonna have to just kinda go by eye So you make sure this bottom point ends below this little curve right here. And this one is in the green a little bit because we have this one in the green a little bit. But I'm actually going to move it over a little. So once you have that, you can notice that this curves up more. So we want to go to edit, curve this up more. Again, you don't have to match it perfectly because... Um, the reference is a little different than our actual drawing here and you can use these little square handles to adjust the curve a little bit more to try to make it a bit more round you can see how that's affecting it here and we'll do the same over here and again we want to put a point in the center to curve this basically the way it's supposed to be curved and then we'll take a look at our actual drawing here and that's relatively close to what we want so I'm going to go down to stroke path stroke and I actually did it on the wrong layer so I'm going to do control Z and go back down to this layer stroke zoom in a little and you can see that it, it is there so I'm going to just click on this move tool and I did draw over the line a little so I'm going to go to my eraser you can change the size if you need to and just erase that little mistake this side's not as important because we're going to be mirroring this again and we're only going to be using this this side basically so you just want to make sure this spoke is the one that's correct and up to halfway is correct because we're gonna we're gonna be using that basically to um, make the whole thing so this is the most important part this halfway point down to this halfway point and we'll use that to create basically the whole thing so once we have that now we can um, go to the bucket tool and just left click in this area here somewhere and that's going to fill this in for us and you can already start to see it's a little bit more like a rim now we're going to go back to the path tool take a look at our image again and we have another interior curve here but it's actually a little higher up than this uh, this outer curve so you just want to make note of that, that we have an interior curve that's higher up. So we're going to make sure we have this path tool selected and you want to go a little higher. Go to design. Put it here and here basically. Go to edit to add your curve. Make sure you're on the correct layer and then stroke path take a look at it that's gonna be fine again like this one looks fine but the left isn't so great 
but this right one's the most important, so we're not going to worry about this. You can go back to the bucket tool and fill this in if you want. If you want to use a darker color, like it looks a little darker right here, you can um, you can select a darker color. To keep this original one, just click this um, switch foreground background color. And I'm just going to control Z to undo the coloring here. And you can choose a, a slightly darker color if you want and then fill this in with a darker color. This is really just, um, the colors are up to you, so if you want to use the same color and you think it looks fine with the same color, you're welcome to use the same color. And we also have these um, black lines right here, which is just like ambient occlusion basically, I guess. So we can add that in just by making a, a dark line around the outside. So I'm going to hide this layer again, select layer 26, and we're going to go back to the path tool, click design, and again we only need to do this right one because we're going to be mirroring this, and we can actually mirror it pretty soon to just fix all the problems or any, um, any discrepancies between the left and the right. And we're going to just start a uh, going just slightly to the right or left of it rather and following along but not following along too closely with these lines if it looks a little off we can adjust this in a minute I just want to make sure it's close enough so that we actually get the effect that we're looking for so that they're basically overlapping. I think that should be reasonably fine. We're going to try this. So now we want to change this color to a, a darker color, almost a black to give us our, our shadow. And we're going to do stroke path. Just make sure you're on the correct layer again. Stroke path. And I'll take a look at this. And if you want, you can um, you can use a uh, instead of doing three pixels, you can do like two pixels, which is probably what I'll end up doing. So I'm going to do control Z. We're going to have to make the path again. Unfortunately, I don't think it saves your path when you do this, so you have to make it again, unfortunately. So I'm just going to go through and make my path again. I was a little too close to the line before, but we'll see what happens. Stroke path two pixels this time I think we'll try two and I think that looks a little better right there so I'll stick with that it doesn't look bad at all I think once we fill this in things will look a bit a bit more closer to what they're supposed to be And we can probably switch to like this brush here and change this to a smaller size. Mm. I accidentally undocked this tab and I, I've done this before and I forget how to dock it again. It says you can drag and drop it here but that never seems to work for me so going to try to, to fix it. I don't know if I can fix it, so I'm going to just leave it, I guess. Just be aware that mine's going to look a little different than yours now, because I undocked this thing. 
accidentally. I'm going to try to make it similar to what it's supposed to be. So what I was going to do is um, change the size here. And it's strange that I was clicking down here and it, it moved the whole thing. It's like, that doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to change this to 3 pixels. And uh, switch the color to the other color. And just get rid of this extra line there. Because it looks a little off. So now that looks a little more realistic there. I just clicked a few times, three times to be exact, to um, get rid of that overlap so it looks a little more natural. So now that we have that, we have basically what we need to get the basic thing. And uh, it's a good time to save actually before we lose any of this. So we're going to go to File, Save As. And I'm going to just put a 2 after the name, so McLaren Rims 2, to let me know that it's the, the second version of it. And then just click Save. Oh, I guess I should, uh click this one this says I can lock it to the dock but it's not docked right now so it won't uh, that option is not actually gonna do anything it's a little too late for that but if it was still there I could lock it so I would I just wish there was an option to just automatically dock it but there's not so now what we're gonna do is go to the eraser tool and like I said, we don't need most of this stuff here. We only need part of it. We only need half, basically half of this. So we're going to increase the size of the brush. And since we already saved this, it's pretty safe to, um, to go through and do this. Because we just barely saved it. We're not really risking losing anything. We still have it saved. So if you make a mistake here, no problem. Just make sure your fade length is at zero. And we're just going to start um, erasing. I know it sounds crazy, but we're just going to start erasing the left side here, all of it. Um, the only thing we're going to keep is basically halfway. So we want to try to try to go halfway. Remember, halfway is roughly here somewhere. So that looks decent. It's probably not perfect, but... And we're also going to erase all this down here, too. And again, you want to try to go halfway, so something like this will be basically halfway. And then try to uh, eyeball it. If anything you want to do, you want to leave more. Like, if anything you want to, like, cut this much off instead of cutting less off. If you're not sure where halfway is, leave a little more than halfway. But I'm going to try to get it pretty close here, which would be... something like that. You can just control Z if you make a mistake. So, that's going to be good, I think. If I made too many errors, we can always go back to the other save file. So you just want to make sure everything is erased except for this much here. And then we're going to do Control shift d That'll make a new layer. We're going to go to Layer, Transform, Flip Horizontally. So now you can see it actually lines up pretty good. So that was actually a pretty, uh, pretty decent erasing there by me, I suppose. Now we're going to go to right click on this, merge down. That'll make them all one layer. Control Shift D to duplicate again. And then go to layer. Well, actually, no. Go to uh, the rotation tool. Left click. 72. Press enter. Click rotate. So 
So now you can see that it's actually basically duplicating it for us. So like I said, we only have to do this small section here and we can duplicate the entire thing. So I didn't quite uh I didn't quite get it perfect here, but I'm not gonna worry about not gonna worry about that too much. And we'll be erasing this again and trying again, so At this point, if you're happy with it, you can actually save it. So we're going to do change this to a 3, save it. Just do a lot of saving so you have something to go back to. So if you make a mistake, you know, no problem. I'm going to uh, activate this layer again, take a look at it. So we have another interior curve here that we can make. So if I go to the curve tool, path tool, make sure you're on design. And this time I'm not going to connect it to the other thing because it's not supposed to be connected. So it's going to be something like this. And then we're going to disable this. Well, actually it's going to, it's going to go down, um, more like this here. And to connect these, I think it's uh, go to edit and then click on the point you want to connect to. So that should be connected. Now we want to hide this since we have our basic uh, shape. And you can see it's not lining up with our thing, so we have to go back to design and um, try to make this line up a bit better try to make everything more consistent on the left and the right than what it is right now and just keep looking back at your reference to see how much space between the two curves there is so that you can adjust So this part needs to curve out more, so we're going to go to edit. This part needs to curve out a little more. And maybe curve this part in some. And curve these out, of course. and use the handles to smooth out the transition. And we also need to curve this part here, so I'm going to go to edit and curve this part here until I'm happy with it to basically match the outer curve and I think that's reasonably good and for this you'll notice it's a darker color for the inside of this so we're gonna make, make it a darker color probably darker even than this so I'm going to go to this darker color well actually it's probably gonna be easier to change this one because it's easier to color pick this color I'm going to select this color, we're going to darken it quite a bit. Something like that's probably fine. Then we're going to stroke path. Again, make sure you're on the correct layer. Change this back to 3 pixels. Click stroke. And hopefully everything turned out okay. That is my wish for now. See this isn't so good but again if we have the other one that looks decent okay this looks this looks okay so as long as this one right here looks okay we're uh, pretty good to go but I may um, I may change this curve a little anyway I'm not totally happy so I'm gonna control Z go back to design and 
try to get the curve to be something more to my liking in this area. And again, we don't need to worry about this part so much, but you can you can mess around with this as well if you want. But it won't make too much of a difference because we're not really going to be keeping this part. We're only keeping this part to um, duplicate again. So once you're happy, you go back and stroke the path. And I think that looks a bit better. So that should be fine. So I'm going to click on the move tool to get rid of my path click on the, the bucket tool and we're just going to fill in that area and hopefully well I'll control Z that so for some reason oh okay I see what the problem is we need to um, right click on this layer do merge down and then we can use the bucket tool which is already selected for me to uh, add in this color any of these minor areas that aren't filled in we can uh, left click again to fill them in or you can fill them in by hand but I think just left clicking to fill them in for the most part works except for uh, down here it's not really working so I'm gonna just change my brush size to something smaller and try to correct correct this a bit that looks fine so but now that I think about it I'm gonna control Z a few times because this is a bit too jagged right here this edge once we uh, as soon as we did the bucket fill it made it really jagged right there so I'm just gonna have to fill this in by hand changing these colors by hand we don't want this uh, this dark black color and we want to make sure the, the whole outline is filled in so doing it by hand yeah it's a little tedious but if you want decent looking results it's uh, it's oftentimes a bit better than doing it the lazy way because now you see we have these nice curves still on the edge like we don't have all that nasty pixelation on this part of the curve that was there once we did the bucket fill the second time so it is a little bit more work but the result is definitely going to be much better and in this case I would rather have a, a better result than save a little bit of time. Just be careful to get all all the parts. It can be pretty easy to miss like a little bit, a little section and not notice. So just be aware that you're paying attention as you go through to change this. And don't forget to change this uh this other side as well cuz it's also needing some adjustment to make it look the way we want it. But this side's actually not as important, remember, because, uh, or this part's not as important, because we're actually going to be copying this part. So it's more important that that one looks nice, and I think it looks a bit nicer, so. Technically, we didn't have to go through and do this part down here. But since I started, I'm just going to complete the task.
so that looks good I mean we could try to get rid of some of this darker area here but from a distance I think it looks fine so that's going to be good enough for us so we're starting to get our rim it looks pretty nice at this point we're going to just save again always good to save as often as you as you feel is necessary once you get something you like save it because it it's difficult to, to get the same result again sometimes and you don't want to you don't want to lose something that you like when you didn't have to so now I guess we can do this inner one so I'm going to go back to the path tool take a look at our reference again and we're going to have to make a few points here just make sure you're on design so you can actually make these points and then go to edit when you have the last point and you can left click on the points you want to join and you just try to make sure the left and right side are kind of uh, symmetrical with your points because they should be I know it's not it's not as easy as it probably should be to line these up symmetrically they basically force you to do it by eye but once you have your basic shape you want to go back in and add your curve to each of these and instead of adding new points I think I could uh, just go back to design and uh, or maybe I have to be an edit to move the handles yep because it's getting a little bit cluttered over here so that looks hopefully good enough and we're going to change it back to a brighter color something like like this maybe and do stroke path just make sure you're on the correct layer and you can hide this other one first actually to see I'm gonna cancel this because our our lines are a little messed up so I'm gonna go back to design and uh, try to make it so that this lines up with everything Then once you're happy with it, you can do stroke path. Hopefully that looks okay. I'm going to click um, the move tool, I guess. Not too shabby, I suppose. And we can't fill it in yet because we don't have this connection here on the bottom. and it actually connects a little above um, slightly above it it looks maybe it's just the angle of the picture I guess it's probably just the angle of the picture so we want to go back to this black color and again get our path tool and we want to just connect 
these two areas and uh, give it a slight curve just for the sake of giving it a curve and then do stroke path click the move tool it's not the best result but I think that will suffice so I'm gonna go back to my other color by clicking this go to my bucket tool and try filling this in I think this should be a lighter color so I'm gonna make it a lighter color and uh, try filling it in again and it doesn't look too terrible but I think I'm gonna just actually color pick this color again and uh, then go to the bucket tool and I'll control Z this first because it looks like it's uh, not doing it correctly so there we go that's gonna be good enough for now so what I'm gonna do is save this and we will we'll continue working on this so I'm gonna go to file save and change this to a 5 and we're just gonna save this it's a good time to stop it looks like my computer's lagging so we're just gonna stop there and uh, you know feel free to experiment with the colors and then we will continue working on the rest of it